Hello friends, I hope you're having a good day today. I've got some exciting news. Jesus loves you. Isn't that wonderful to know? We've been on a, on a journey here lately, on a journey into the presence of God. That's where it's at, friends, in the presence of God. Oh, how we need God in our life. See, we've had this problem. It's been going on for a long time, uh, since back in the very beginning. Genesis chapter 3, since the fall, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve heard God and hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Friends, this whole Bible right here is about a beautiful love story. It's a beautiful love story of how God is trying to, to restore a broken relationship. Romeo and Juliet, they've got nothing on this book right here. For God so loved the world, he loved you, friends, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a beautiful story right here this is. Friends, God is trying to save us. We've been duped. We've been deceived. Uh, most of the world think that they can live their life apart from God. And you can't. That comes from the devil. And he is a liar. Friends, there's only one way we can live, and that's through Jesus Christ. We'll never be complete. You will never be complete unless you allow Jesus Christ to sit on the throne of your heart. So today, what I want to do is I want to take, I want to take a look at how God uses friends to bring friends into His presence. Now this is going to be our life in our series of In God's Presence. This is our life one. This is going to be our wrap-up right here. I know this works right here. Now, I, I chose this, uh, this, this message to give life because this to me is the power punch. I mean, this is, this is if, you, if you want to, to experience the presence of God in your life in a very real way, in, in a very supernatural way, the things I'm going to share with you today is going to help you do that. And I know deep inside you probably want that. Uh, I am a product of, of friends bringing me to Jesus. I would not be here before you right now if it wasn't for friends. People cared me. I had friends, real friends, that carried me right into the presence of God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Lord, I want to thank you so much for bringing real friends into my life. Friends that love me so much that they carried me all the way into your presence. Thank you, dear Lord. And that's what I want to do today. I pray that, that as we speak, as we open up your word, that we're brought right into your presence today through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Open up your Bible. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And I'm going to pick up at verse 1. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was heard that he was in the house. Who? Jesus. Jesus was in the house. And immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. Not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Wow. Wow. The NIV Bible says that Jesus had come home. He'd come home. And as soon as he did, it was on right then. It was on. The word got out, Jesus is back. He's back in town. And he's at the house, the house, preaching the word. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says there were so many people that there was no more room. Let me tell you something. When Jesus is in the house, when Jesus is in the house, the place packs out. When Jesus, the word, is being preached, the place will fill up. The place will fill up, it will be full of life, full of joy, full of hope, because everybody, friends, needs Jesus. Everybody does. Verse 3 says, There came four, bringing their friend, who was a paralytic, to Jesus. Now, that's what real friends do, friends. Real friends, real friends had the courage. Because it does take courage. I think the most courageous person out there 
in the world today is a Christian. With all the peer pressure and everything going on like that, it takes courage to talk about Jesus. It really does. And a friend is a friend indeed when he cares somebody to Jesus because that's that empty spot that everybody needs. Now, think about this. There are people out there. There are people out there that, that, uh, that the only way that they can come to Jesus is, is for someone else to bring them there. It's for someone else to bring them to Jesus. That's the only way, the only way that they're going to they're gonna come to Jesus. Think about this. This man was paralyzed. He, I mean, he was paralyzed. There was no way that he could come to Jesus on his own. It had been impossible. And, and we're led to believe here in this, in this story that Jesus tells that, that his paralysis is directly related to his past life of sin. So the thing that this man was longing for more than anything else, what he wanted more than anything else, what he needed more than anything else, was to hear the Lord say, your sins are forgiven. Friends, the weight of sin is heavy. It's so heavy. No doubt this man was hurting more on the inside than he was on the outside. Now, I speak to you today as one coming from experience. I have been that way. I had been that point. I had made bad decisions in my life. And friends, I want you to know I had hit rock bottom. It was a gutter. But, but I want you to know what hurt more than anything else is was on the inside. Friends, the weight of sin, it, it just tears you up. You think, oh, I messed up my life. I, I messed this up. I messed that up. It just tears you down. It tears down your self-esteem. It takes away your hope. It takes away your drive. Friends, this guy was hurting on the inside. Friends, there's a lot of people out there that need forgiveness. There's so many. They need a fresh new start. They need a new beginning. They need healing. They, they, they will never get to Jesus without the help of others. And, and the Bible says there came four. I'm sure there's four out there right now. One, two, three, four. And I could probably keep counting right there. Bringing their friend to Jesus who was a paralytic, who was helpless, who couldn't come to Jesus on his own. Maybe it's where he's at. Maybe it's some bad choices that he made. Maybe he's embarrassed. Maybe he's beat up. Maybe he's even depressed. But friends, right there is the person that you need to go to to bring to Jesus. It says, but, the, but they couldn't get into the house for the crowd. Well, picture that. They couldn't get in the house for the crowd. Well, I guess they tried, right? They tried. Friend, sorry, Fred. Sorry, Fred. Uh, you know, we tried. The house is too full. Is that what they did? No way. No way. They couldn't stop. No. Friends, they, they carry you. Friends, real friends, carry you all the way to Jesus. All the way. Because Jesus was his only hope. I'm so thankful that there's such a thing as intercessory prayer. That when I can't help myself, that when, when I can't pray for myself, that when, when I don't know what to pray for or even how to pray, that when I'm knocked down by Satan and I can't get up on my own, that I have friends. That I have a friend that instead of just talking about me, instead of just gossiping about me, will lift me up all the way to Jesus in prayer. These four right here, these four took it upon themselves to carry this poor man's burden all the way to Jesus, all the way to the Lord. And the, and the Bible says that somehow, now I, I want you to picture this, visualize this. Somehow they got on top of that roof. I mean, I could just, they were carrying a cot, you know, and I, I don't know how they got that vertical going upwards without dumping him, but let me tell you what, they just did it. Somehow they did it. They got him all the way to the top. Friends, don't you just love it when people don't make excuses? They just do it. They just get it done. You know, I've heard it. We've all heard it. Oh, Pastor, I would, but. I would, but. We hear, we hear it a lot. You know, friends, don't let anything or anyone keep you from going all the way to Jesus. Don't stop. Don't let anything get in your way. Don't let the crowd discourage you. You know, don't let what he said or what she said. Please, don't let anybody keep you from, from getting to Jesus. If you allow things like that to trip you up, 
Friends, I promise you, Satan is going to have your life lined up with problems. He says, if this is how I can get to you, he's going to keep those comments coming. He's going to keep people saying things to you that's going to hurt your feelings. Friends, you just need to predetermine right now. I'm not going to let anything separate me from Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, not them. It's life or death, really. Whatever you do, get to him. Just get to him. And that's exactly what they did. That is exactly what they did. They tore the roof down for their friend. They, they didn't let anything stop them. They tore the roof down for their friend. Now, that's real friends. You know, I could, I could imagine as they were doing this, couldn't you just picture, picture being in the same room that Jesus was in. Now, they're up here tearing the roof down. You know that some debris, debris started probably falling. And I'm picturing it falling on Jesus' head. You know, a little bit. But but what's really probably the ones really is when the, the scribes and the re religious rulers that was there also, I could imagine them as they seen the, the roof starting to tear apart and they realized it was somebody, I could imagine them just gasping, going, ah, I can't believe this. But I could imagine a smile coming on Jesus' face. Can you? I could just picture a, a smile coming on Jesus' face. And, and then as they lower their friend all the way to Jesus. Don't miss this. Verse 5. And Jesus saw their faith. He saw their faith. You know, how many of you here today, how many of you are listening out there today that, that know that our faith should be seen? That it should be seen? You know, it's it's a witness. It's an evidence that there that there is a God. That there's a God out there. Friends, if there was ever a time that you need to let your light shine, it's now. It, this COVID, this crazy COVID stuff, it's got everything turned upside down. People need hope. People need, people need to see your faith now more than ever. Your friends need to see your faith. I know the guys that led me to the Lord. I saw their faith. I saw the faith of the ones that tore the roof down for me. They, they would take an hour every week and come to my house. It took 30 minutes one way driving to my house, then 30 minutes on the way back. And then they would stay at my house a couple of hours and they opened up the Word of God to me. They opened up. They tore the roof down. I'd never seen faith like that. Anybody, I'd never heard of anybody sacrificing their life just for me to lead me to the Lord. It touched my life and it made a huge difference. The Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. I want you to notice, they didn't even ask him to do anything. They didn't. All they did was lower their friend to Jesus and probably just stood over him. I imagine after, I don't know how far they had to bring their friend. It, the Bible doesn't say. But it was probably a long ways. And it was a, probably a pretty heavy load. You know? And then you get to the house. And then you had to climb up on top of the roof. And you had to tear the roof down. Friends, I imagine that they couldn't say nothing. Probably they were just going... <sighs> They were probably totally out of breath. Out of breath. They never said a word. And the Bible says, He saw their faith and said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Without a word. Without a word, Christ forgives his sin. And I've got to ask this question. You probably are thinking the very same thing. Why would Christ do something he wasn't asked to do? Right? I mean, he didn't. Nobody asked, or, or did they? Because, now I want, you to, I want you to write down in your heart what I'm about to say, because this could save your family. This, this could, could mean life or death for your family right here. We wonder why our, a lot of our young people are just walking away from Christianity. Listen, because what you do says a lot more about what you believe than what you say you believe. Friends, People watch what you do more than they listen to what you say. That's right. Verbally, non-verbally, they were screaming, forgive this man, Jesus. Give him a new life. You know? So, so given this revelation, given this revelation right here, what's a real friend look like? What should our prayer life look like? Is God wanting more from us than just words? Pastor, I, I've been praying for, for, for Fred. Have you gone to visit him? Have you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you carried him 
all the way to Jesus? Does he really know you care? You know, what? think about this. What, what, what would our prayer life look like if we never had to use words? Think about it. What would it look like? What would your prayer look like? If, you, if prayer life looked like if you didn't use words. You know, I'm praying for my husband. I really am. I'm praying for my children. Do they know? Can they tell by the way you're treating, treating them? You know, I'm a product of nonverbal, nonverbal prayer. My wife's eyes told it all. It did. And it still does. Yeah. It, it, it just told it all. And, and see, if she prayed for me, something happened in her life. See, prayer, prayer doesn't necessarily change God's heart. It changes our, changes God's mind. It changes our heart. And something happened in her life as she prayed and fasted for me. I've seen a change in her life. And so it happened the same in your life as you pray for somebody. As you pray for somebody, he does something in you. The Holy Spirit works in your heart in a special way. They, those men, those men, they could have, they could have shouted from outside, Hey Jesus, hey Jesus, we're out here, we're out here. We're just going to keep praying out here. Is that what they did? No way. They didn't. They, they didn't stop. They decided the best way for Jesus to hear their prayer request was for them to take their friend all the way to Jesus. All the way there. All the way into his presence. Into his presence. Out of breath and everything. And Jesus says, I see your faith. He said, he said, look at that roof. I can just picture Jesus. He said, look at that roof. Look at that roof. You guys, y'all know me. You, you, you know me. You, you, know, you know my personality. You know my heart for the lost. Oh, man. Guys, your sin is forgiven. I can just picture that. Now, that's what a real friend is all about. That's what a real friend is all about. A real friend doesn't give up on you. A real fan, friend... Just, it's, it's, I mean, if you really want to meet the need of your friend, don't tell them about the world or something going on in the world. If you really want to help your friend, connect them to Jesus. Bring them into the, into the presence of Christ. Okay. I told you, this is our wrap-up series. This is, this is number five uh, here in, um, on In His Presence. And I, I thought about this, and like I said, I say this not here to lies because I know by now you, you realize how important it is to have an acute awareness of the presence of Christ. And so, friends, would you like to have a supernatural, what I call a supernatural uh, experience, God is in a supernatural way in your life, that you will know that it's God working in your life, that you'll know that God is working in you and through you. Do you want that? Okay. I want you to use your mind here. I want you to go back in time a little bit. Remember the first time that you jumped off a diving board into the deep end? You remember that? You remember how exciting that was? You, you probably, like me, I was so scared. I was so scared to jump off that diving board. Oh, but I wanted to do it. I was, but I was scared because it was, it was safe. You know, it was safe. You know, on, on the shallow end. I could, my feet could touch the, the floor, you know, and I, I felt comfortable there. You know, I didn't feel pushed or anything like that. And, and but, but, but when I finally did it, when I finally did it, boy, boy, it was so much fun. It was so exciting. I did it, I did it. And boy, it didn't take me long to run all the way back around and get in line to do it again, right? You probably remember what I was talking about. But, so it was scary at first. But after you did it, man, you, you did it once. Oh, yeah, come on, let's do it again. But friends, I believe that we're living in a time right now that God is making a call. I believe if you're watching right now that God is calling you right now to jump. Jump off into the deep end. Yeah, friends, I know it's scary. We've been on the shallow end long enough. It's, 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 it's not that easy. It's not that easy letting our light shine. It's not that easy for, for, for others to see our faith. Because, because there's this, there's this uh, I don't know, there's a peer pressure or something about saying, oh, you know, I don't want my friends to think I'm too much of a holy roller or something like that. But, but friends, if there was ever time that your friends need to see your faith, 
that you actually need to, 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 to come out of the hiding spot and let your light line for, uh, shine for Jesus, it's now, friends. It's time. You know, I want to challenge you to do something here. I want to challenge you. Now, this will change your life. It, it's a lot more thrilling than jumping off the, the diving board into the deep end. There's nothing more rewarding than having the opportunity, the, 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 the blessed opportunity of leading somebody else to Jesus, friends. Are you willing to do this? Are you willing to ask God to lay somebody on your heart to lead to Jesus this year? 2021, think about it. Think about what would happen if everybody that's watching right now were to ask God to, to lay somebody on their heart that they could lead to Jesus this year. Friends, it's not that hard. You don't have to be a theologian. Just share with others what Jesus has done in your life. Just be a witness. I tell everybody, I'm not a preacher. I'm not. I'm not a preacher. I'm a witness. I'm a witness of what Jesus Christ has done in my life. And he promises us. Jesus promises us. If we have enough courage to be his witness, he promises us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that we will receive power. The power of the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. God promised us, He promises us that He will be there with us. If we just have enough courage to, to, to reach out to a friend and lead them all the way to Jesus. He promises us He'll do that. Now, that would I mean think about what would happen if we all just started doing that. If we all just witnessed to one person. Friends, it would change. I think uh, you know. To me, the guy that, uh, that, that led me to Jesus, he didn't know. Uh, I, after I was baptized, he was killed in a car wreck, him and his wife. And he has no idea that I become a pastor. And so when I get, up, when I get to heaven, and, and after I hug Jesus, give him a big hug, I'm coming for Dave. The guy's name was Dave. I'm going for him, and I'm going to give him a big hug. But see, it's not only going to be me but the persons that I've got to lead to the Lord myself, and then the persons they've led to the Lord. See the pyramid effect? Friends, this is wonderful. It is so thrilling. I think it's the most thrilling thing of the whole of our whole lifetime is when we get to heaven and people come up to us and say, I would not be here if it were not for you. I would not be here. Friends, God will bless you supernaturally if he, with his presence if you start being a witness for him. If you just go out there and be a witness for him. Luke chapter 10 verse 2 says, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. And then he says the way we can do something about this is pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send me out. And that word pray, if you look at the original word there, is the word beg or plead. Lord, please, I give you permission, Lord, to use me out there in the harvest. Put somebody on my heart that I could lead to you. Friends, because there's people out there right now. Because God is the one that did this. I mean, He did it. Uh, we can talk to Him about it when we get when we visit with Him in heaven. We, we can talk to Him and say, Lord, why did you choose human beings to lead other human beings to the Lord? But that's just the way He did it. God, God chose it this way. There, there's something about leading someone else to the Lord. That, that, that's, that's part of God's big plan. Uh, maybe because the angels had fallen uh, and we know what it's like to be fallen and, and, and how big God's grace is. You, we've been there and done it. I don't know. But, but I know that there's people out there. There's people out there. There's no way that they're going to be brought into the presence of God unless someone else brings them. Will you be that someone? God wants to use you, friend, to work a miracle in someone's life. Friends, I would be dead. If it were not for a friend just like you, I would probably be dead right now. The way I was living my life, the drugs, the alcohol, the back of all the things, I was killing my body, killing my body. And somebody come into my life, right there in my mess, when I was helpless, when I was so far away I couldn't help myself. I wasn't praying for myself. I didn't know how to pray for myself. But somebody walked into my life grabbed a hold of my hand, and led me all the way to Jesus. And God used them to work a miracle. See, it was part of God's plan for my life. That, that he, he had a plan for my life. He had a plan in the ministry. But for that plan to be fulfilled, it took somebody just like you 
coming out and reaching me right where I was and bringing me all the way to Jesus. Friends, are you willing to be used by God to work a miracle in someone's life? I hope your answer is yes. And I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, I know right now that you need boots on the ground. That you need people not afraid to let their light shine. That, that, that are willing to take their, uh, their, their lamp out from under that bushel so that they can let their light shine to the whole world. You've got people all around them that need to see their faith. I pray for the Holy Spirit's anointing. I pray for a supernatural amount of your presence upon them. That they would realize you're working in them and through them. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, God bless you. I hope this message hits your heart. God needs you to share the good news that Jesus is coming soon. God bless you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.